It's a holiday in Japan, and the fans have filled the seats. They're here to see their favorite performers. But these J-pop girls, they're just the opening act. This is the main event, and this lady, yes, that's a lady, isn't here to sing. Who's your favorite wrestler? Aja Kong Number one. Number one. Aja Kong Senshi. King Kong. She's here to kick butt. You beat people up for a living. So does that. For more than 30 years, Aja Kong has been the queen of Joshi Pure Wrestling, women's pro wrestling in Japan that for decades has had a large and loyal following. Five feet, five inches tall, and 105 kilos, she's arguably Japan's most famous monster heel, a so-called villain in wrestling terms who shows no mercy to her opponent. But sitting down with her at a training gym on the outskirts of Tokyo, Aja Kong reveals a different side of herself. She says the fierce character she plays stems from her childhood as a girl who never fit in. Every day I'd go to school and every day my classmates would ignore me and bully me. Born Erika Shishido in September 1970, her mother was Japanese and her father an African-American military serviceman who left when she was only five. It was bad enough coming from a broken family in a society that frowns on divorce, but being the only mixed race child at school was especially tough. The other kids wouldn't talk to me, and when they finally did, the boys especially said, you are of mixed blood, you're a half-breed, you are black. By the time she was in fifth grade, the bullying became too much. Just 10 years old, Erica took out her frustrations on the only person she could talk to, her mother. She usually would say, whatever they're saying is unfounded. You shouldn't be ashamed of yourself. It's not your fault. So all you have to do is be brave and just face them every day and be patient. But that's what I'm doing every day. I'm doing exactly what she tells me to do, and every day I go to school and they ignore me and say things about me I don't even want to hear. So on this day, I went to her and said, I'm doing exactly what you said, but they still do this to me. Why did you even have me? Soon as I said that, my mother went to the kitchen and grabbed a knife. She pointed the knife at me, like this, and she said, since I decided to have you, it's up to me to decide to kill you, too. As shocking as it was to see her grab a knife, I was even more shocked to see her crying, because she had never done that in front of me before. For Erika Shishido, that moment changed everything. She knew she'd have to find a better way to live, and soon she did. It was 1985, and a young pro wrestling tag team called The Crush Gals had taken Japan by storm, becoming huge in mainstream pop culture and idols for Japanese schoolgirls. For Erika Shishido, now in ninth grade, it was an opportunity to escape the bullying at school and shine. Shishido beat out 2,500 other applicants to make it to the All Japan Women's Pro Wrestling Training School. A year later, she was ready to go pro, but the high she was feeling quickly came crashing down. I told the company that I was interested in becoming a babyface because I wanted to be a hero. But then the company told me, you're a half, so you have to become a villain. You're a half, and you're black, so you should feel this hatred towards Japanese people and crush them. She had little choice but to obey. It was do as your bosses tell you, or you're out of a job. So Erika Shishido dyed her hair and put on a painted mask. The villainous Aja Kong was born. My mom fell ill when I was 17. She had a brain hemorrhage, and I was out fighting in these matches feeling, I don't want to do this, playing this role. I wasn't even earning enough to be able to support my mom. So I was thinking, what can I do to cheer her up at the hospital? What can I do to give her courage to fight this illness and make her happy? 
She was usually watching television late at night when pro wrestling was on, and I found that the way to cheer her up was to let her see me doing well on TV. And I told myself I decided to become a pro wrestler because I wanted to be famous, and it's a place where I need to make a name for myself. And hiding something about myself was contrary to my purpose, so I decided to use being mixed race as my weapon. Self-acceptance was the key to her success. Fans began to cheer for the villain, and by 1993, Aja Kong was world champion. Now, with nearly three decades of experience, she's paying it forward, coaching newcomers on how to take bumps by showing them how to do it herself. And although considered a veteran, she says Aja Kong has no plans to slow down. I used to think that if I'm not performing like I did when I was at my best, then I'd quit the next day and have no regrets. But now I think the moment Aja Khan retires will be the moment I die. So I'm not thinking of having a retirement ceremony in this ring, because as long as I'm living, I'm going to be a pro wrestler. What is Aja Khan afraid of? What is Erika Shishida afraid of? To age, to grow older, for Aja Kong too, growing older eventually means death. And in my everyday life, I sometimes fear that. Aja Kong learned through self-acceptance, you can make your dreams come true. For all the children who are feeling that they are different from others and that life is tough because of it, I would like them to know that could be your best weapon. And I also want them to know that you're never alone. There was a time when I thought I was alone in this whole wide world, that nobody was with me. But then I had my mom. And even after I lost my mother, there were other people who came to support me as Aja Khan. And that's why I'm still out here today. In a career as a pro wrestler, you can't win every match. But Aja Khan says she's won the fight of no longer being ashamed and living life on her terms. For Simon Asia, I'm Liu Zhaochu in Tokyo.